I would like to explain to you what a nano-augmented reality is. Today, around the world, there are various technologies that symbolize our dream of the future, such as affordable space flights for everyone, replacement of conventional cars with electric cars, Hyperloop, passenger drones, atmospheric satellites staying in the air indefinitely without refueling. What do all of these technologies have in common? Currently, they are not available. I would like to analyze which of these technologies will become available in the near future and which ones won't, ever, and why. When we are talking about transport, there are only two things that really matter. That is, energy to weight ratio and specific strength or specific weight of transport. On this chart, the horizontal axis shows energy per kilogram passenger kilometer. That is, how much energy is spent per kilogram of weight being transported over a one kilometer distance. The vertical axis shows the weight of a vehicle itself per passenger being transported. So, let's start with a pedestrian. Why does a horse spend less energy than a man? Because humans eat steaks, and horses eat grass. I wonder, what if we have a look at the existing means of transport? Where would they be on the chart with respect to these two points? These are all the types of two-wheelers. The most amazing thing is that, actually, a cyclist spends more energy than someone traveling on a motorized vehicle. That means, if you move everyone over from motor vehicles to bicycles, CO2 emissions will actually double. A bicycle is not an eco-friendly means of transport. You can see that the best performing vehicle among all the existing ones is actually U-Jet. Mass-produced cars. You can see that they are on a different level from the point of view of their weight. However, they spend as much energy as two-wheelers do. Is this a coincidence or not? It appears that buses and minibuses also spend the same amount of energy, and irrespective of their size, they require the same amount of materials per passenger. Luxury cars. As you can see, there is a huge difference here. So, what's the deal with aeroplanes and helicopters? These are helicopters, and these are aeroplanes. I'm not sure, are you actually surprised or not, but I was very surprised after I had analyzed this. It does not matter if you are riding a scooter or flying on an airplane across the ocean. You actually spend the same amount of energy per one kilometer of travel. It's amazing. As far as weight is concerned, it's the same. A Boeing 737 and a Toyota Prius have the same per passenger weight. They are obviously very different vehicles with a different design. This cannot be a coincidence. It's a fundamental property of all transport vehicles in the world. Here are railways. Again, all modern railways look similar to other types of mass transport. If you highlight this square based on energy and weight, then 95% of all the trips taken by people around the world fall within this square. If you take a slightly larger square, then in the blue colored area, 5%, and in this area, 1,000th. By the way, notice that regular aeroplanes have the same performance as regular cars. A luxury business jet has the same performance as a Porsche. It's definitely not a coincidence either. Let's increase the scale 100 times. Why did I do that? This is a device people use to fly into space. However, considering where it is positioned relative to regular transport, it becomes clear why the cost of spaceflight is so high and not affordable. In the beginning, I mentioned Hyperloop. Probably everybody knows what it is. Where is Hyperloop on the chart? It's over there. Now, it is absolutely clear what the prospects of building and mass use of Hyperloop are. That's it. Nothing to add here. Chemical rockets, which mankind uses for spaceflight. In order to move them to the area where all luxury cars are, for example, a Porsche Cayenne, you would need to improve their energy efficiency 14 times. 
This will never become a mainstream means of transportation. Elon Musk is not being straight with us. The Hyperloop. I showed where it is on the chart. When I got this number, I thought, what can I compare it to? Because when talking about building a Hyperloop, they talk about typical travel distance of 1,000 kilometers from Los Angeles to San Francisco or from Moscow to St. Petersburg. From an economic standpoint, it appears to be the same as building and driving on a 1,000 kilometer bridge or building and driving in a 1,000 kilometer tunnel. Economically, it's the same. The longest bridge in the world is 164 kilometers long. It's located in China, between Beijing and Shanghai. The longest tunnel is the Channel Tunnel, at 50 kilometers and 300 meters. Sorry, Elon, but it looks like you're not being straight with us again. But let's go back to what is actually possible. Why did I pick this particular helicopter? It's the most mass-produced helicopter in the world. It's a four-seater. As far as the weight is concerned, it's the same as conventional cars. It's a four-seater, just like a regular car. And now, everybody is talking about designing passenger drones. In order for a passenger drone to be affordable for everyone, its marker should be touching the black square. Why did I only show half its weight? Because, as it turns out, if you don't change the weight, then you can't produce it for the next 15 years. Tesla car. It's an exclusive car. See, next to Mercedes S-Class, BMW X6. However, if we want a mass-produced electric car, then it should not be just touching the edge of the black square, it has to be better than all the other cars to eventually push them out of the market. So, in order to solve this problem, we need to address energy-to-weight ratio and weight problems. In other words, specific strength of the vehicle components. These are two sides of the same coin. All motorized vehicles in the world spend the majority of their energy to carry their own weight. There is only one motorized vehicle in the world with no pedals and with an efficiency rate above 60%, not 30%. It's U-Jet. Okay, now a passenger drone. If you don't change its weight, you will need to increase its battery capacity four times. I'm not aware of any such technology. Perhaps it could be developed at some time in the future. That's why I am talking about 15 years. But when you break the problem down into two parts, if you reduce the weight as much as possible at first, and then increase its energy capacity, then, once battery capacity has doubled and strength has doubled as well, you can have a real mass-produced passenger drone. And it is very clear how to accomplish this. And I think that if we get together some of the companies represented here in the room, together we can do it. I think it will change the world. But what is most important is that we are talking about a trillion dollar business. I believe that this goal is achievable within five years. However, there is an even closer goal. An electric car which can make all the other cars in the world obsolete. Of course, it's not just one type of car, it's many types of cars. They should all share certain distinct characteristics. So, what do we have here with energy and strength? How do we resolve this problem here? It looks like it's enough to increase battery capacity by 40%. It's a technology that we have heard about today in this room. It's a lithium-ion battery with a silicone anode but with a radically new silicone anode without graphite, plus a little bit of nanotubes. It won't be possible without them. However, you then still need to double the strength. As far as cars are concerned, it's not just the weight of the car, because 30% of the energy is spent on dissipation in tires. Therefore, it's about both reduction in weight and also a critical two-fold improvement in tire performance. Is Mahindra CIE Automotive here? Our partners from tire companies are here in the room as well. BAK Power Battery is here. We can do it together in three years. Again, today's cars markets is worth $1 trillion per year. I believe that we should go beyond just making slightly better tires or increasing the strength of some composite parts. We should have a clear vision of why we are in it. Here are these two projects, these two goals the creation of a conceptually new electric car market in the world. 
and the creation of a passenger drone market from scratch. This is our joint objective in business. I'm not aware of anything else that is more attractive, important and realistic. Once we start looking at our achievements from this angle, it seems to me that the business plan of each company is going to change. We are in it. If you want to join us, you are welcome. This is a photo of a space elevator. I decided not to overload this presentation with any number, but to make this cable, which goes down 40,000 kilometers, you need to increase the strength of materials 50 times. Today we had a vote. I voted that this would become real in 2050. I believe that it is achievable. Professor Pasquale is here, in the room too. He can confirm that it is possible. I think we should keep really important goals in our sites. I believe that we should keep really important achievements in our sites, those that will change the reality. We need a new reality, and we are calling it a nano-augmented reality. I hope that we will get there together. Thank you very much.